Welcome to Money 911, where we ignite your financial journey and empower you to chase your dreams. I'm your host, Chris Miller, and today we're diving into a truly transformational episode with the incredible Leanne Marie Webster. Leanne is not only an attorney turned entrepreneur, she's a beacon of inspiration, having created the No Regrets, No Limits Weekend and the No Regrets Formula. With her wealth of experience and heart full of passion, she's here to help you break free from the shackles of regret and self-doubt. Get ready to uncover the secrets to stop procrastinating on the goals that truly matter. Let's embark on this journey together. And remember, your biggest dreams are just a decision away. All right. Welcome, everybody, to Money 911 and my special guest, Leanne. And I'm really excited about this conversation. No regrets. I have a few of them, and it's oh. changed my life. So, Ooh. right? Welcome, Leanne. It's really nice to have you here. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here, and I'm very curious now about you. <laughs> but it's I don't know if you're going to reveal any regrets, but I'm I was right into it, honestly. Okay. Yeah. My grandma. I was such a, you know, I was a little rascal kid and I was pretty selfish and really didn't, I was more in that mindset about me, me, me. And, and so when I went to visit her, I didn't realize it was the last time I was going to see her. And so it was just me, get this, get that right. Yeah. I wasn't, and it, it's, it really, it really hit me when I found out she passed away and I, that has that has been such a huge regret that I've gone out of my way to consciously be with people and realize that tomorrow's not promised. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we that's, have to be here totally present. Yeah. That's wow. I'm sorry. Um, and that's such a beautiful example of, of what I love to help people see, right? The, you know, regret, regret in and of itself isn't bad. I mean, regret shows us what we value. Um, and you value your grandmother, you value relationships with those who are near and dear to you. And that's, so that's a good thing to have that awareness. And what you've done beautifully that, um, that not everyone ends up doing is say like, okay, I, I felt that I did that. You can't change it yet. You can change moving forward. Um, how you spend time with loved ones, you know, saying that you love them and just being way more present and using that as kind of, I call it fuel for your future. So beautiful exactly really beautiful because the whole schoolroom earth the whole deal here really is the lesson is love and being kind and that's yeah. you know that's that's not you would think that wouldn't be so hard but it's the hardest thing for us to get along and love each other and not be so judgmental and you know yeah. not everybody has to think like i do even though it's perfect yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and judgmental of others and ourselves i mean that's really been it's interesting. It's been a huge lesson for me. And I would have never in my life said, oh, I don't love myself. Yet, if you looked at how I treated myself or spoke to myself, um, you, there is no way that was a loving relationship. So, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, I had caught that one later in life too. And, and I'm actually sitting there going, you know, love one another as you love yourself. And I was like, and it kind of hit me, you know, a few years ago, like, love yourself you're supposed to love yourself that much you know not yeah. the the ego look at right. how wonderful i am but the you know the kindness of okay i screwed up again and instead of cursing yourself you go right. okay you're yeah. learning you're in schoolroom earth right 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 yeah the momentum to go forward because that's the only thing that's what i'm really present with that's the only thing we leave here with mm -hmm. is that love and kindness and heart connections with each other, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, you know, I had a few, few of those other ones with the, with the, uh, you know, another family member that, and some friends and different things that I wasn't present for. And, and we get, and it was because I was so busy with my work and I'm so important. And that is such a trick because yeah. the value really is money is just for memories Right. right with our right. family and friends so yeah just asking you personally 
what you know the no regret for you personally how's that how has that shaped your life um well i have a i have very few regrets um i will say that and it's funny because before i started doing this work i used to say like well, i don't have any regrets i just you know i live my life um and while i do believe that everything happens for um there's a reason you know and how things unfold and that life is happening for us and not to us i do have a couple of regrets um one is actually related to my my grandmother um and it's just that i remember being younger and being in her house um she died gosh when i was in my 30s early 30s yes yeah, so 20 some years ago yeah. and you know you'd hear the stories right and she'd tell the stories and every time you go grandma would tell those stories again and we never recorded the stories you know because we just thought we'd hear them a million times and now it's like i would love to hear the stories again and, and have asked her questions i never as an adult i kind of never related to her thinking about her as an adult and the things that she had seen and the things that she had experienced and i wish i would have said like you know what what is it, what was it like to yeah. be alive and the and during the depression you know what was it right. like to have those kids r run the farm that you ran with your husband like and just to understand more about her as a woman and as a human and then also what she saw and living through what she lived through in her world yeah. you know exactly and it's so purposeful for us to have that and um you know, I'll do it remotely for you because I, my family is, you know, my dad has, we have a huge story, you know, walking across Europe and all these different things uh, during World War II. Oh, wow. Getting away from the Nazis and then coming over on the boat and the steerage and then, you know, the homestead. And then my wow. dad being one of his teachers was Einstein. And then I walked barefoot across America like Jesus and so we have quite, we have a quite a family story, and inside of that, in the end of, end of the lives of my, my both my mommy, my daddy, my sweet angels, they all both had their stories. So I literally would fly up and record my dad telling a story, and then my aunt had written the story about the grandparents, and then it was sort of like something that was like I didn't you know really realize what I had till now, you know, at this time in my life when I have less years ahead in the earth, you know, than behind. And so when I look at that, even though I'm living to 120, <laughs> then I look at the value of the life and how important that is. The generation now won't even have a clue about how to think, how how those thought processes are yeah. you know, going into this digital screen world that, and right. that we're in. So all of that that you can capture is amazing. In fact, my dad has scrapbooks all the way back that we're we're going to donate to the Smithsonian Institute. Oh wow, wow, really cool stories. It's, so, and it's really all we have is our story and our and our love for each other. So, yeah. So you're really making up for that in your business and helping others. You know, so grandma's inspiring, inspiring yeah. that too. Yeah. To feel that and to not lose those moments that yeah. um the so one of my other big regrets is um that is related so i'm gonna i'm gonna tighten this if i can the um the, the, the one of the reasons i do what i do um is because when i was uh four my brother who was 12 at the time i had three brothers um was killed in a car accident mm. And, um, you know, he and my older brother were like out riding their bikes and, you know, one saw the car got out of the way and Danny didn't see it and it hit him. It's just a freak accident. Yeah. And so it's, you know, no one knew, no one knew that day that, you know, he's 12, he's a kid. No one knew that was going to be his last day in this realm. Mm -hmm. And so that's part of my inspiration. My main inspiration for the work that I do is because I feel like our, our lives are precious and we don't know when we're going to go and something's going to happen and not to be morbid, but you know, um, it's, it's life and death is part of life. Um, exactly. Exactly. And it's not talked about. So yeah. It's really yeah. dark, you know, when yeah. I just had a family member crossover and it was catastrophic. And I realized that this is so hard is because nobody, the two things that nobody wants, and I decided, you know, I'm going to talk about it. 
death and taxes. Right. 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 And instead of yeah. this black funeral, and I hate the way that people said, sorry about your loss. Like I didn't lose anything. I'm not, I'm not accepting yeah. that. They're winning. Yeah. And that's really the reality. That yeah. They really are. We are all connected in this 100%. illusion on earth. We really can't really, you know, feel that they are yeah. present. And as we become more conscious, we're aware of that, but there really yeah. is life after life. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Right. And yeah. If people knew that the whole energy on it would be a celebration of life instead yeah. of the, the, the black gloom and doom. And it's the end. It's not yeah. the end. It's, it's the beginning. And it's just still, in a different, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And well, it's, Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I say it's it's fascinating because I have a closer, closer, I mean, I was four, but I have a, what I consider to be a close relationship with my brother who died, Daniel, now that I didn't before, because we're able to connect in this realm in a different way. And I mean, I, I've got so many stories of him like popping in and kind of, you know, just communicating, but the, right. but one huge regret that I have is with my brother, Jim, the, the older brother who was with him on that day. Um, he passed about 10 years ago mm. and we never had a conversation about that day. Wow. So 50 years ago, this happens. He's with him. He's got to feel guilt over it because, yeah. you know, any, especially if he was 14, like any kid would feel guilt over just being there that day, let alone that he survived and, you know, and Danny got hit. And we never had a conversation about it. And it's like, you know, because like what you're saying, right? It's death and it's dark and no one wants to talk about it. And, and I'm like, I cannot believe that I didn't have a chance to get his perspective and to let him know that, that the family doesn't blame him, that it was an accident and just let him unburden his soul. And right. I feel like that could have made a difference in his life and how he lived it because he lived kind of a tortured life. And I'm certain that it started with that day. Yeah. Well, the beautiful thing I think about God is that the, the forgiveness and the love of, of all of everything is, will empower him. Even if that you didn't have that conversation because yeah. it wasn't his fault and, and, and it gets all fixed. That's how I feel when we transition Mm -hmm. and, you know, and you're, and we're in the right faith and belief that it, it, it'll get healed, but it yeah. is a really good lesson. I get that a lot of, go, oh, you know, it's like, I wonder, oh, I don't have anybody to ask on the outside now. And so I think it drives us inside, which is mm -hmm. another good thing to mm -hmm. trust God. That's how I feel. And, mm -hmm. and because that's the torch to get through. This is a really hard planet. It's like there's no joke about it. This is the, the you know, the workout room. But right, the blessing, right? right? The right. blessing is that we can take that to help others. That's how I got to make this really painful part. Okay, I'm going to use the nightmare of my family as the propulsion for my business because in my business and 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 legacy planning, they didn't quite do everything. They got their living trust, but they didn't get the catastrophic illness protection and different wow. things that I talk about. So wow, wow. It, it's a nightmare in the, and now we'll take the nightmare and use that to learn and help others. Otherwise, what's the point of it? Right. Right. We right. Feel sorry yes. for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So let me ask you, what's a fun and unexpected habit that you've adopted that impacted your productive you know your mindset around kind of everything we're talking about because a lot of it is a mindset you've got to almost program yourself with right for sure um so what the what's a fun habit that i've adopted okay i love this question no one's ever asked me this question um the first thing that popped into my head was meditation but i don't know if i'm going to consider that a fun habit <laughs> i mean it is but it's not like my fun is like, no, what's the, um, I, the, uh, you know what? It's, um, it's laughing regularly. Um, I really make it a point, not like a, I'm going to laugh today, but I, but I make it a point to, um, you know, watch comedy specials. To go, I love stand up comedy, go see comedians to read funny books. My, my Instagram feed and my Facebook feed are comedians that I love. 
And it's like, I make it a point to uh, be conscious about what I'm infusing my, myself with and to make sure a lot of it revolves around laughter and, and things that put a smile on my face. That's really good. That, I mean, <laughs> yeah. How do you laugh? Oh yeah. You could watch some comedy. No, that's right. right. That's, that's really good. I did do that today. I just broke a glass, a really good glass that I didn't want to break in millions of pieces. And, you know, and I started to curse at it. It was like, wait a minute, I'm going to change, change it. So laughing up oh, there goes my glass. You right. Know? Oh, right. well. Oh, perfect. And then look at the blessing. Oh, it fell on the carpet. So right. all I have to do is lift the carpet and vacuum a little. It's okay. Yeah. It's like an hour of cursing the air and then making myself right. a grumpy old thing, you know. Right. <laughs> right. right. I'm the only one dealing with it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you know, because of the, the, your, your uh, conversation, uh, you know, not having regrets and, 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 you know, not putting off the big goals is is really, really a cool conversation. We're, you know, we're just spontaneously having, but I wanted to kind of deep dive a little bit about the myth around pursuing big goals that maybe you might want to debunk in a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the first one is that I'm... Um... You know, a, a lot of people, I think, downplay the importance of doing something big, right? And we get kind of caught up in our day-to-day. -day. A lot of us are living Groundhog Day-ish, right? We get up, we go to work, and we're like, oh, you know, someday, someday I'll, um, when things settle down. Oh, yeah. Which you know, never happens, right? When, when I have a little more time, nobody ever has a little more time. Yeah. When I have a little more money. No. Uh, um, you know, the, the fact is there's that quote of, um, I believe it's Eleanor Roosevelt who says, um, today is the, the, the youngest you will, the oldest you have ever been and the youngest you will ever be. And it's like, yeah. Okay. Great. So what can, what can I do with this? And, and what happens is we often look external. We say, well, if I have more time and I have more money and I have more resources, then I would do the things that I really want to do or take that big goal or take that big trip. And the truth is, it, that's putting the power in the wrong place because the power is really not in those external circumstances. It's in how you are showing up and what you're doing. And I will say, if you do put your attention towards achieving something big, then that will give you more fuel and will actually create the time, the money, the energy for it. There's a mm -hmm. way that the universe shifts right. when you do that. It does shift. And I actually experienced that in my business, I've been in practice 34 years. So about, you know, midway through life in my 50s, I decided, you know what, I'm going to take everything that I've learned here and give back. So instead of making my legacy at the end of my life, I'm going to live my legacy so that I can get the joy now, right? I and, love it. Yeah. And, and so creating financial literacy programs for youth or yeah. or, or people that are caught in the in a corporate situation that have no idea about money or right. cities. And then, then I get to have the joy of doing that. Now, when I started, it was like, Oh, I'm going to get to mil my download was I'm going to go to millions of people, millions of people. How am I going to, you don't want to just, you don't want to look at the big idea and, and think about how am I going to do? Cause it'll naturally come if you take the first step and stay present and keep going forward yeah. and so you don't have the regret, right? Right, right. And, and, and the other thing too is that, you know, big goals, you know, sometimes people get tripped up in that. And it, and it you know, it doesn't have to be climbing Everest. Yeah. You know, big goal doesn't have to be that reach a million people or climb Mount Everest or whatever. A big goal can be to be the best mom you can be. Exactly. It can be to, you know, show the most love to your family that they've ever experienced. It could be to be really present with your grandmother and to, and to feel it yourself and to let her feel it. I mean, those can be big things that, that are easy to do and that don't take a ton of time, money, energy, or other resources that you have. That's such a good point. I'm glad you mentioned it because people think of big goals that I have to go, you know, get an Olympic medal or something. Right. It, right. It is an Olympic medal being a good mom or having, 
you know, family connections and gatherings and conversations. And that's, that's what's, that's your plate. That's what's in front of you. That's your plate. Yeah. Yeah. Then then you have the gold medal because like you were cool with the kids or you shared something. Yeah. That's the neatest thing. Yeah. I got another, another fun question for you. Okay. Imagine you could host a dinner party with three of three, any three people, right? Living or dead and discuss goal setting and dreams. Who would you invite and why? That's a good one. Okay. Um, well, I got to invite my grandma because I miss her terribly and I just want to, I just want to connect with her. I love her so much. Um, Oh, I'm getting emotional at the thought of okay. sitting That's and having a meal stuff. with her. That's I love her. Stuff. Yeah. Um, I would invite Oprah. She's the other one that pops into my head. I just think, you know, she came from such humble beginnings and was able to, um, ha- has and is still creating so much impact in the world. And, um, and, you know, she's made her own way. So I think she would be cool. Um, and then my other one is random. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters. Okay. <laughs> I love the Foo Fighters. I just think he's a good human being. I just think he's like, um, or maybe I'd swap. Do I have three? Do I only have three? You, well, you can have another one if you want. <laughs> okay. I'm the fourth one. I would. So Dave, I just, you know, he's, he's accomplished a lot. He also, when he, you know, he was in Nirvana and he made enough money in Nirvana. He never had to play another note in his life, but he went and created Foo Fighters and he's, you know, done a lot for, um, for, uh, music. I don't know. I just think he's a cool human. Um, and then the other person is Jerry Seinfeld, who is one of my favorite comedians. I have to have a comedian at the table. Um, but partially because he is so, um, he works hard. Like he's, and, and I'm a big believer, like, how, how do I explain this? Just the juxtaposition. While I believe it, it can take, you know, hard work and dedication and discipline to a- achieve certain things. Um, you know, you don't get to the Olympics by like, you know, just working out one day a week. Right. I also believe um, I don't like to buy into the hustle mentality. So I'm, I'm very careful about that hustle hustle culture. Cause I feel like some people wear it as a badge, like how hard they work. And it's like, well, it doesn't have to, you don't have to suffer. Okay. But Jerry, what I think is interesting about Jerry is, and um, there's this story that he went by this um, construction site one time and he saw the, you know, the guys working, you know, nine to five, you know, doing the hard labor and his, he saw it. Oh, you know, good thing. I don't have to do that. Like, you know, a comedian, but then he thought, well, what if I did do that? And that turned him to writing every single day and really focusing on his craft and, you know, doing more shows and doing more open mic. And he is, he's to this day, I think does 200 shows a year. Like he's so disciplined in his, you know, how he writes, what he thinks about it and all that. And he really likes to look into like, what's funny and why is this funny? And why is that word funny instead of that word? And I think access to that brain in that way, I think would just be fascinating. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> and we're all, we all have little pieces that each person shares and it just becomes a whole thing and helps everybody. That is, that's way cool. So here's another one for you. If you could go back in time, and give your younger self one piece of advice about pursuing dreams, what would that be? Mm. Um, I would say calm the F down, lady. I would. Please. <laughs> like, yeah. settle down. It's going to happen. The, when I look, I've been journaling since I was uh, 10. Um, as a matter of fact, randomly, I happen to have my first journal here because I'm doing a talk later this is my very first from 1978 yeah i'm um, very oh my little handwriting was so adorable get my little so neat cool. doesn't look like that yeah. anymore cursive yeah. cursive for all the young kids yeah, out there cursive. <laughs> Ooh, right. <Ancient> scripts. <laughs> that's right it's like hieroglyphics now yeah. but the- <laughs> that's so cool but when i go look through my journals um it's fascinating because i'm just you know I can't wait until this happens. I can't wait until this happens. And I'm, and I'm so 
future forward. And I'm so like, I'm, um, you know, wanting this to happen and wanting to be successful and wanting, you know, and, and I get it because, because I was in circumstances that were not great. You know, I didn't grow up with money. I had an alcoholic dad. I had a bipolar mom. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, my, my brother died when I was four. Like I grew up in, in not the best soil, you know, and, um, and I made something of it. And yet I, I, when I, what I see through all those writings, when I read them is that I just wanted to know that it was going to be okay. And so it was this sense of like, you know, is it? Good. And yeah. so I would go back and say, girl, it's going to be beyond okay. Like you're not even going to believe the adventures we're going to have. It's going to yeah. be better than okay. It's going to be incredible. Just yeah. calm down. Enjoy now. Enjoy yeah. right now. Go talk to grandma. Go get her stories. Like yeah. soak it in right now because you're not going to have this day again. Like, That's good. yeah. That's good. That's mm. it right there. Soak it yeah. in. Yeah. 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 And, and enjoy your thighs. That's the other thing I would tell her because they ain't never going to look like this again. <laughs> they are not fat. They are. <laughs> your body. Remember, you're just your right, like, car just, and, and right. your identity is your sweetheart. Yeah. And, and yeah, that's, that's, it. you know, it's so interesting. You know, I'm, I'm just watching a lot of things shift and I think each, process of this journey you, you just put on different pair of glasses and 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 look at it because that's sort of similar but actually it's like everything's going to be okay it's like what about this what about that it's like everything's going to be okay i'm going to trust god it's going to be okay i'm not going to yeah. about it, you know because yeah. it's always like it's every second you're that but you know and right right brain and so you're know, down girl down yeah Hey, yeah. It's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be all right. <laughs> gonna be all right. <laughs> so, okay, I got another one for you. Okay. If you could create a theme song for your life's journey, what would that be? Oh, um. Well, one of the the song that popped into my head is one of my favorite songs, which is the Queen "Don't Stop Me Now." I love that song. Um. That's a very like I'm having a good time. I'm having a good time. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, that kind of fits with with what you just said too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, I'm going with that. <laughs> well, yeah, and no regrets. So you, you know, you're you're fun, and you know, we're 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 kind of randomly talking a lot of different things. But maybe share with everybody. No, maybe share with everybody <laughs> what you're up to, and how they can get in contact with you too. Yeah. Um, well, I, I'm all about no regrets. So, um, and, you know, and, and harnessing that, uh, what the regrets that we do have, forgiving ourselves for them, which I have a, an exercise that I walk people through, um, around that. So it doesn't, you know, regrets are only bad if they weigh you down or prevent you from taking action. And so um, I have a process I walk people through, um, in my speaking and in my coaching. Um, and what I'm really excited about is I have this weekend. It's a virtual weekend it's called No Regrets, No Limits Weekend. Um, and you can go to no regrets, no limits weekend.com to find out information on it. Um, and it's a three day experience. And it's where we really look at like, you know, where are you now? Where have you been? We actually look back. Um, so many of us don't look back, you know, because we get so focused on forward and where we're going and our goals and whatever that we don't take stock of kind of like what we have accomplished, what we have done, what we, you know, the trials and the tribulations and what we can learn from that. So where you're at, where you've been, and then where you want to go. And then we literally create a 90 day roadmap for how you can create what you really want to create and take advantage of the now and the today and honor it and make sure our tomorrows are what we want them to be as well. That's great. So how did everybody contact you by? Um, yeah, you can go to my website, my which is my whole name if you want, Leanne Marie Webster dot com. A lot of E's. Anyway, <laughs> a lot of E's. Yippee. <laughs> I always think it's such a my own inside weird joke. I have a friend who um where is he? Is he's Romanian? I can't remember where he's from. But he um he's he's from a place where they don't you have a lot of vowels. And so the first time I ever like wrote out my whole name to him, he's like, Wow, that's a lot of vowels in there. There's a lot of E's. <laughs> And it must have sounded interesting for Ms. I think about it now whenever I say my name. So they can go there. You can go to no regrets, no limits, weekend.com, no regrets, formula.com. Yeah. 
you know, it's just, it's helpful because we become, a, you know, eyes for each other. Most of the time we can't see ourselves or what we've gone through, how to process. I mean, it sounds good on paper, but I close the book and I, how do you put that, integrate that in your life? So having a process for no regrets is hot. It's great. It's a good thing to be able to be able to see that and then leverage the regret for something that are give you propulsion to go forward. Yeah. 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 And to ask yourself, I mean, it's a question that, you know, I, I created this formula because I realized I had been able to achieve a lot of things in life. And when I kind of looked at how have I done that and how have I helped others achieve a lot of things in life? I, I, that's what I crafted the formula from, right? Like I've used it and I've helped thousands of people achieve their biggest goals by using this formula. And so part of it is, um, is, you know, just doing that. And also like, having that uh, connection to, you know, look, the, the runway ahead, you kind of said this earlier, and it's, it's, it's a phrase that's really been rattling around in my head this in the last few months, the runway ahead is shorter than the runway behind. And that's okay. So what do we do with it? Let's stop saying someday, someday I'll do this, someday I'll get better at this, someday I'll get someday is not a day. So let's, Take that out of the equation. And what do we do? Let's start today. Let's get moving, man. Exactly. And, you know, I've actually, you know, I've kind of forced myself and you have to do that, you know, be triathlon champion and all the different things, you know, uh, attorney turned entrepreneur and all these different things <laughs> you've done. Right. <laughs> but there's an exercise there. So, you know, and I, I kind of see it similar. It may seem small, but maybe, you know, it's like something's on the table you got to put away. You walk by, it was like, put it away. Instead of going, I'll do it later. I force myself to do it now. It's like, pick this up or put this over there or do this thing. Oh, I'll do it later. No, I'm doing it now. Yeah, and and, right. and now I'm in that rhythm. So I don't even have to force myself. And then everything stays more in order for me yes. to accomplish what I got to do. Yes. A thousand <laughs> times. Yes. Yeah. It's, that, it's the little thing of the, you know, it's why you know, don't go to sleep with dirty dishes in the sink or, you know, make your bed every morning or, you know, put the, just put the thing away. You know, it takes 30 seconds to do it right now, but if you wait and then, you know, do it tomorrow and then there's another, and then there's no, and then all of a sudden it's like four hours worth of work to get everything back in order. Exactly. And uh, you know, it's amazing how that affects the consciousness because the same thing is happening with what we're allowing inside of ourselves with our own thoughts. Yeah, right? sort of yes. like the sloppy thing go along. Wait a minute. I'm not going there. Everything's going to be okay, but yeah. I'm going to add my will to make it that way, right? A hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Leanne, how fun. What a fun conversation. We just sort of spontaneously threw it at the wall here and but. and just <laughs> definitely catch catch her wave so you don't have regrets and check it out and if you have other questions just let us know it's been fabulous talking with you today thank you i really enjoyed this chris i really appreciate you having me on the show and um yeah thanks All right. <laughs> take care thank you for joining us on this enlightening episode of money 911 i hope you feel inspired to embrace leanne marie webster's wisdom and take bold steps towards your biggest goals. If you've enjoyed this conversation, please subscribe, leave a review, and share it with someone who needs a little push to pursue their dreams. Remember, the only limits that exist are the ones we create for ourselves. Let's break through those barriers together. Until next time, keep dreaming big and living without regrets. There's so much to learn about healthy money. I hope today's discussion brings you one step closer to securing and protecting your future. So you can get started on the right foot, go to meetwithchrismeller.com and schedule your free financial fitness strategy session. Thank you for listening and please subscribe to Money 911 so you don't miss our next episode, which includes health, wealth, and peace of mind.
lives inside of 